gonna try this. I don't typically do traditional wrap-ups on my channel, but I had a really excellent reading month in the month of January, so I decided that I wanted to go ahead and film this for you. I'm Sam here again with A Bear and a Bee Books and today I wanted to discuss my January wrap-up with you. I've kind of read a couple different types of books so that's kind of how I'm going to go ahead and wrap them up. The first one I would like to share with you is a children's picture book. This is The Moon's Almost Here by Patricia McLaughlin and Tommy DePaula. And um, I thought that the illustrations in this were just beautiful. Let me show you one. Here's one of the moon. Um, I like the, I really enjoy the color palette in this one. There's a lot of greens and blues. Um, I really enjoyed reading this with my daughter. There are a lot of animals in this one, which if you have a toddler who loves animals, I think that this would be a good book to try. You can see here, there's a cat and some birds. Um, her favorite things to say are animal sounds. So this was a really good choice for us and we really enjoyed it. The next is another children's book. Um, this is more um, middle grade. This is Freya and Zeus by Emily Butler with pictures by Jennifer Thermes. First things first, I loved the part of this book that was about the animals. I thought that Freya and Zeus were really um, clever characters, and I loved the growth of friendship between them. This does have trigger warnings, though. It has trigger warnings for death and suicide. And um, for me personally, in my background of my life, I didn't feel like the topic of suicide was covered well enough for the age range that this is set out for. Um, I, I thought that it was more appropriate for an older audience, and I think that the rest of the book is more appropriate for the target audience of, um, you know, like eight to, to 10 year olds. So if this had been written for an adult book, I wouldn't have thought twice about it, but because of the target demographic, it kind of lessened my enjoyment of the book, and I'm not sure that it's something I would let my daughter read on her own. So some of it's really wonderful, and some of it I think you definitely have to go into carefully. Next is a YA book that I read, and this is Song of the Sparrow by Lisa and Sandel. This is written in verse. It is kind of a King Arthur prequel. <laughs> um, it's set kind of before the events of the round table, um, during the wars. I really enjoyed this. Um, this is one of those books that has been on my shelves forever. And sometimes if you're like me, you sit around and you wonder like, cause I have a big physical TBR. Like, I don't think I've ever really admitted it. It's huge. I'm not even sure. I mean, hundreds, we're talking hundreds. <laughs> so maybe one day I'll actually count and admit to you how many there are. But um, anyway, this is one that was sitting there for a long time and I wish I had gotten to it sooner. I really found it enjoyable. Um, I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. If you like King Arthur, I think this is definitely one you should give a try to. Um, I enjoyed the main character, though she, she drove me a little crazy sometimes. I thought this was really good and it kind of, um, I do love King Arthur. It kind of invigorated um, my love for that and it made me want to read more um, in that area. So maybe I will later this year. And I thought the notes in the back um, the author notes and things like that. It talks a little bit about um, like what they actually know about the time period and um, you know the actual historical evidence. So I thought that that was really interesting too and uh, like I said if you are a fan of King Arthur or if you like books told in verse or if you just really love YA I would give this a try. Okay next. Now I know some people don't like to talk about Christmas after Christmas I'm not that person. <laughs> um, I actually, my husband and I have talked about this year about trying to keep the Christmas spirit active all year. So um, yeah, so I read two Christmas books, but it was still the season. I mean, technically I may have more in February. We'll see. There's a bunch I wanted to get to this year and it was just, you know, crazy time like it is. 
And so now that things are a little bit more quiet, I've had time to get to some more. So the first one is the Christmas Box by Richard Paul Evans. I really enjoyed this. Um, I thought that it was really, um, it's really a nice book to get you into the season. Um, it does pull on certain heartstrings. You know, I read some of the reviews that maybe that's why people don't enjoy it so much. Um, but I thought that it was, it was really well done. Um, it's basically a story about um, this young family and they're living in this um, like small apartment. They go to live with this woman as like an employment opportunity in a bigger home in the area and they start, it's kind of like that found family theme. Um, so if you like that, um, I would definitely give this a try. There are triggers in this though, trigger warnings as far as um, death and death of a child. So just be aware of that. Those are trigger warnings of yours going into this. I'm usually really touchy um, in regards to that and I was able to read this just fine. I didn't find it um, it's it's not overly like descriptive or anything like that in that particular regard. So um, I found it really beautiful though. It really talks a lot about, um, you know, how life is so crazy and how people are so focused on stuff that really doesn't matter. This kind of brings you back and tries to refocus on the things in your life that do matter. And a lot of times, a lot of us um, can be a lot better off than we think we are. Um, but yeah, um, that's just my opinion, but I really enjoyed it. I actually ended up giving this five stars um, for the overall way it made me feel um, when I was done reading it. Yeah, I remember this was really big a while ago and I've read another one of his fiction books and really enjoyed it. It just took me a while to get to this one. Next, I read another Louisa May Alcott. I had just recently finished reading Little Women for December and then I picked this up. This is A Merry Christmas and Other Stories and this is one of the um, Penguin um, Christmas Classic editions. And let's see. So these are really beautiful. Um, it's just like a simple red underneath, but they have these beautiful end papers and dust jackets. And I believe, I believe that there are six in this collection and I would like to eventually collect them all. Um, this is the first one. I received this as a beautiful gift from my in-laws and I was really happy to get this because I had just finished reading Little Women so like I reread some of the Christmas scenes because if you just want the Christmassy part of Little Women you can pick this up. But it taught me I love her writing. I just, I don't know, she's an author for me. We connect. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm originally from a small town in New England. We kind of have that similar um, background there. I know Little Women, I believe, is set in New England. So, um, yeah, it just, I don't know, she's an author for me. And reading the second book just confirmed that. This is basically, though, what this is, is it's a bunch of her writing that focuses on Christmas. So it's kind of just like Christmas in a little package and completely wonderful. I would highly recommend this um, next season if you're looking for something to get you into the Christmas spirit, but maybe you don't want to read, you know, the whole Little Women or, um, you know, you want something a little bit quicker. Um, I would really suggest this and I thought it was quite beautiful. And finally, I read two historical fiction books in the month of January, which when I first started reading again, like after college for pleasure, that was the main genre I focused on. And I've read a lot of it over the years. Sometimes I go away from it, sometimes I cling to it. Um, and this year I'm really feeling in the mood to read historical fiction again. So I was also wanting to read things like set in winter. Um, I live in Florida, but oddly it was a little cold in January for us. So that was really nice. And I was just feeling like in the spirit of, you know, the winter season. And I wanted to really um, embody that in my reading. So the first one of those historical fiction books I read was... The Glass Woman by Caroline Lee. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. This book is full of them. Um, violence, uh, sexual assault, rape. I mean, it's packed full. I don't typically read things with this much um, grit in them. But for me, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, it's basically a story about a woman. Um, it's set in Iceland, which I love. I've been to Iceland. Yay, Iceland. If you're from Iceland and you see this, hi, I, lo I love it there. Um, but anyway, it was really nice to go back in this book 
and um, <laughs> I read somewhere, I don't remember who it was, but somebody said this is like the Icelandic Jane Eyre. Now, I haven't read Jane Eyre yet. Shh, don't tell. I'm going to read it this year. But um, that's the plan anyway. But yeah, it, it felt like that. It's, um, it's very gothic and it's very suspense um, filled. And uh, again, this is another book where you've probably heard me mention it before, where the setting becomes kind of a character itself. Yeah. It's also a very ironic love story. Hmm. Yep, it's in there. Look for it. You won't find it in the beginning. You've got to keep reading. But um, you know what I did find really interesting about this, though, is it's set in Iceland and it's about this woman and you know she has she goes and she marries this man and she has to go to another town and things get weird and creepy from there but um it's only like a couple rooms and then there's like a loft and um I was like man like this feels like this should be set in like an old gothic house you know like how weird can stuff get in like three rooms well it gets really weird <laughs> Um, but in a good way for me. I, I enjoyed this, even with all the grit. Um, so, trigger warnings, look into them. There's tons of them. But I thought it was really beautifully written. This is set in the 17th century, I believe, in Iceland. And it even has some Icelandic words in there. And there's a small glossary in the back. It's not overwhelming. So, um, you know, don't shy away from it for that. But, yeah, it just suspenseful it's descriptive it's gothic yeah and it really it goes like into detail about um trying to survive as a human being and um how others can make your life more difficult and how others can make your life um you know make you want to survive it's it's kind of all those things and everything in between like a regular everyday life and how women were expected to you know run the house and and do all the food and and how as a young woman being new to marriage that might be overwhelming to you um especially when you're in a place where you don't know and your family is not around and you're all on your own and you you don't know any of the villagers um how that can be scary on a level but then there's so much more going on that's crazy there's so many spoilers in this book and I don't want to give any away so um just I really enjoyed it um just be careful but I really think it's worth the read and I think if you love gothic um novels if you love suspense if you love um anything set in Iceland I'd give it a try I really enjoyed it and finally, The Glove Maker. This is by Anne Weisgarber. And um, this is one, I think I picked this up last year when I was getting on another historical fiction kick and it's one I've been meaning to get to. Um, I think it's a little bit of a quicker read. You could get through this fairly quickly if you wanted to. This book is set in the late 1800s and it's basically um, surrounds the Mormon faith, but it's about a settlement that are a little bit more outside the church but still within the church so it discusses a lot about plural marriage and what that meant not only to the children of those families but to the wives um, it, and how it affected the rest of the community and how it affected the way that everyone saw all the mormons even those that did not practice plural marriage um, it talks a lot about the misunderstandings and even some atrocities that happened um, that feeling of unrest between um, the traditional um, Americans and the um, people of the Mormon church back then. Um, so, I mean, I guess it can be a little skewed in its telling, um, but I thought that it was really well done. I don't know a whole lot myself personally, just admittedly, about the Mormon church. Um, I went to school with some kids who were Mormon, um, but other than that, and just the basic knowledge of, you know, the founding and the book and things like that, like, I don't know tons myself. Um, I am a Christian, but I'm not of the Mormon church, so I don't have a lot of personal knowledge about this. But as far as, like, a book 
I did enjoy it. This also is set, there's a lot of winter in this book too, and this one isn't super suspenseful for me anyway, but it has that being set in a place where you're kind of trapped off from the rest of the world. Um, the setting in this is very secluded and there's kind of that ever-present feeling of being trapped, but it's not necessarily um, a suspense or a thriller. You are waiting. In the very beginning of this book, you learn a man comes to the door to our main character there and she wants to help him because she believes in helping others but her husband's not home because he is basically he repairs wheels and he's traveling for work and you learn that he was supposed to be home already but he's not come home yet and so that kind of feeling and you know waiting for him to come home that kind of pushes most of the novel and there's some other things going on too about the man at the door and that opens up the whole story if you enjoy um historical fiction about the mormon church obviously i would say give this a try if you enjoy books set in secluded settings um, if you enjoy that feeling of being cut off from the rest of the world i'd give this one a try um, if you enjoy books that have that, um, you know, you're kind of waiting for the what happened, um, this is also good for that. Um, yeah, but I, I did enjoy this one. I think I enjoyed The Glass Woman more, but um, this one is a little bit quieter um, and it, um, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Sorry I couldn't give too much synopsis on both of those because they were both kind of full of spoilers. Oh, and one more. I finished an audiobook which I had been listening to forever. These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rosh. Now, I actually ended up enjoying it. It took me forever. I mean, forever. Months and months and months and months and months and months and months, maybe even a year, I don't know. Long time. But I think that was more me because I had read another book that reminded me of it like right before I picked that one up and whenever I do that I have a tendency to not want to get the two mixed up in my head so I think that's why I kept putting distance um also too I'm one of those people that will at one point have like 19 to 20 items on my currently reading on Goodreads now I may not read them all every single day but I like to have lots of choices I, I kind of look at it as like um you know, you watch different shows, right? You don't just watch one show. I mean, you might, but <laughs> I like to have different things going at the same time, different storylines, different characters. I probably do too many, like maybe 10 would be better. Um, I'm working on that this year, but it's what I like to do right now. So I enjoy reading and that's how I read. This book is about political intrigue. It's about family dynamics and how, um, Families can get torn because of um, people's personal drives and desires. Um, there's a lot of manipulation in that book. There's a lot of found family too, which I know is a favorite trope of a lot of people on booktube. I really enjoy it as well. Um, it's it's not really pirates, but there are some piratey things in there. I live in Florida and one of my favorite scenes in the book it takes place in like a swamp area. If you like that kind of thing, there's a little bit of it in there. I, I think it's a duology. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a duology and I'm interested to check out the second book. I think I ended up giving it four stars. I did enjoy it. I think I just, because I had recently read something like it that I loved and so I, I didn't want it to kind of overshadow the other one. The main character was interesting. Um, there's a lot of stuff though that happens in her childhood that is really messed up. Like um, her parents basically force her to be a spy and you don't see that but it comes to you in like flashbacks as as you're reading the book and um being a mother of a little girl it, it's twisted like that's not okay so um yeah i kind of had a little mm, made me feel a little mm, about that but yeah i i did enjoy it it's um a, an adventure story it's full of all different kinds of um, groups of people and places and she goes all over the place in the created world. I'd give it a try. If you've read the second book, let me know. Should I continue? Eight books for me? That was a good month. <laughs> 
So um, I hope that everyone watching has had a wonderful uh, January and that your reading year is off to a successful start. Um, my favorite book of the month, hmm. it's weird because my star ratings don't always match up how I feel later on. So I don't go back and change them. I think I'll change them on a reread. But isn't that funny about star ratings? Because for me now, looking back, my favorite book was probably The Glass Woman, but it didn't necessarily score the highest. Um, but yeah, that one for me is kind of like one of those things where there's a lot of to get to the good. So, but to me, the good was so good in that book that it was worth it. So, um, and the world isn't all you know, butterflies and roses, awful things happen. It's just a matter of whether you want to read about them. That's all I had for you today. I hope that you're all doing well. Thanks for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye.